The first time I took a look at the global styles inside of Generate Blocks, I didn't really get it. In fact, it was after using it several times before it finally clicked for me. But when it did, it opened up a whole new world inside the builder. Now I've seen a lot of good websites and a lot of bad websites. And one of the biggest differences between the two is consistency. Even an ugly design can work well if it's really consistent throughout. But the most beautiful design is gonna to be totally ruined by inconsistencies. And that's where Global Styles really helps out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can set up global styles and generate blocks and why it's so important to do it. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at an example first. So we're gonna look at the admin bars website as an example. Across this site, you'll see this yellow button with all capital letters come up in a lot of different places. Here's a variation of it with a different color and another one down here. Now let's say further on down the line, I changed my mind and I don't like yellow anymore. If I were to go across every page on this entire website and every post and have to change this yellow to a new color, I would be very, very upset. But thanks to Global Styles, I don't have to do that. So let's take a look at how I would change this yellow button across the website. I'm gonna go to the back end, go to Generate Blocks and Global Styles. Here I have one for my buttons. And in here, you'll see I have several different buttons set up. Here's the yellow one we were looking at. Let's say we decided we wanted to go with pink as our new brand color. I'll change this global one to pink, hit update, and go take a look at the front end of the website. Now everywhere I've used that global style, the button has been updated. And this is across all different pages on our website as well. Just like that, I can change this one thing globally across the entire website. Of course, it does take a little planning and foresight to set all this up ahead of time, but if you'll think about the most common elements you use on your website before you start the build, you can set up global styles, reuse those throughout your website. Editing things across your entire website becomes a whole lot easier when you just have one place you have to go edit it. This is extremely useful when you're doing client sites and they have revisions. You're gonna set yourself up to save a whole lot of time if you go ahead and spend the time in the beginning to set up the global styles. So let's see exactly how we do that. So to get to our global styles, we'll go to the back end of our website and go to Generate Blocks, Global Styles. Here, you'll have to create a post to put your global styles in. Typically what I do is create a new post for each one of the different block elements. We'll go ahead and hit add new and create one of the posts for all of our buttons. In here, we'll give this a title of buttons and we'll drop in a buttons block. Now we can go ahead and style this button exactly like we'd want. So let's go ahead and change some of these values so it doesn't look like the default. We'll change the padding. We'll give it some border radius and perhaps change this color on hover from black to just a darker blue. And just like this, we have a new button style that we like. Well, we need to give it a label so we can recognize what it is. In this case, we'll call it primary default. Now I might want a variation of this button that's just a little bit smaller. So we'll go ahead and hit add a button and we'll change this padding values to make it just a little bit smaller. For this one, we could call it primary small. Now that we got these buttons created, we can go ahead and hit publish. To see these in action, we'll go back to the back end of the site, we'll go to Pages and Add New, and we'll create a new dummy page. In here, we'll drop in our buttons block, and we have this option here for Use Global Style. When we choose that, we can go here and we can see the primary default or the primary small button that we created. So it goes ahead and brings in all of the styles for this button but the actual content of the button, like whatever you want it to say, you can change on an individual basis here, including the link. Of course, if you want to override this style on a one-off basis, you could go in here and change this. Let's say we wanted to give it a pill shape. We could give it a big border radius all the way around it. This button is affected, but the global style isn't. We're overriding it with some local changes. If we want to clear those out, we can click this button and hit clear styles and it will go back to defaulting to this global style we selected. We'll go ahead and publish this page and we could send it off to our client to proof. Of course, they're gonna come back with changes, right? So we can go to Generate Blocks, Global Styles, 
edit our buttons, and we can change the color of these buttons to whatever we'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and select both of them here, and we'll change this blue color to maybe a darker green color. And on hover, we can give it even a darker green value. We'll go ahead and save this, and we can go back to our new dummy page and hit edit. Now you can see this is updated to the green color. It's using the primary default, which we just set in the global styles. Now, of course, just one button on a page, it wouldn't be worth doing all this. But like the example we saw on the admin bars website, if you had dozens or even hundreds of buttons across an entire install, having one single place to go change them is a huge benefit. But buttons aren't the only thing you can use to create global styles. I create global styles to make containers as well as headings in almost every website I build. So let's take a look at a couple examples where that might be useful. Back here in our global styles, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one for our headings. We'll give this the title of headings and we'll drop in a heading block. Now the global style doesn't care about the heading level of this heading you'll be able to use this style no matter what heading level. So I'm just gonna leave it at a H2 since that's what it defaulted as. And we'll go ahead and put in here pre-heading since that's exactly what I'm gonna create. For this example, we'll go ahead and give it the label of pre-heading and we're gonna change the styles here. For the typography, I'm gonna change the font size to 14. I'm gonna change the transform to uppercase and I'm gonna give it a lot of letter spacing. So you might often see these kind of little pre-headings above a bigger heading. I use these things all the time, but there's really no good place in my theme to set up a default for one of these. But that's where global styles come in handy. Now I have a setting set up for these pre-headings that I can use throughout the website. Of course, we have other types of headings we might wanna to do too. You'll often set up your default paragraph styles inside the customizer. But what if you need an additional style for a smaller paragraph or even a larger text paragraph? Well, we can do that with global styles. I'll just go ahead in here and put in some dummy text just so I can look at something while I'm designing. And for this one, we'll do 22 as the font size and we'll call this paragraph large. We'll create another heading change it to paragraph, even though it doesn't matter what we give it here, we're only really dealing with the style. And we'll give this some more dummy text. And for this one, we'll call this paragraph small. And here we might say we want this 14 pixels tall. So this might be good for some of the fine print you need under a sign up form or something like that, where this might be good for the intro paragraph of a blog post. So with these changes made, we'll go ahead and publish these headings and we'll jump back into our page we were designing in. So now that we're in this page, let's go ahead and use some of these things in context. We'll go ahead and delete this button out of here, have this container and give ourselves just a little bit of padding. And we can drop in a big headline here, big headline here with some paragraph text. We'll just drop in some website Ipsum and a button. So we can say this is the general style of what we'll want this section to look like. Of course, this text, we might wanna break up into two lines and this first set of it could actually be our paragraph large. So by using that, we're now using the bigger size we set up for paragraph text. We can go to our button and turn on the global styles and use the primary default. And we might wanna go ahead and even add a pre-heading here. So we'll add another heading block just above this one. And we'll say big news. And we'll change the global styles to pre-heading. Just like that, we've used three different global styles to create this page that we can now control globally throughout the entire site. Back in our global styles, another good example is the container block. I'm gonna go ahead and create another global style for containers. We'll give this one a name of containers and we'll drop in our first container. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't tell you how many times I forgot to change the padding on tablet and mobile. By using the global styles for your containers, you're gonna be a lot less likely to do that. What I'll do is go ahead and set up a couple different variations of my containers with different padding sizes. 
By doing that, I can ensure that I'll have consistency in my sections across the entire website. This first one, we'll just call it default and we'll give it 80 pixels of padding on the top and 24 on the left and right. When we get to tablet, we'll change this to 60 on the top and bottom. And when we get to mobile, we're gonna change it to 16 on the left and right. Now we can duplicate this container. And on this one, we might call it small. And we'll give it just 60 pixels of padding on the top and bottom and 40 on tablet and mobile. We could duplicate this again and maybe make one called large. On this one, we could do 120 on the top and bottom and 80 on tablet. And we still have our 16 in there from mobile. So now with those done, we'll go ahead and hit publish and go back to our page we were working on. Now, instead of having to set all that up manually every time, we can drop in a container, hit use global style, and pick the default small or large global style we already have set up. Now we know across tablet and mobile, we'll already have these default settings set up so we don't have to remember to do it again. Now do remember, you can override these settings at any time. You'll just go down in here. Let's say we wanted to make this on this particular section, 200 on the top and 200 on the bottom. We've now override this padding setting on this exact instance, but not on the global setting. Inside of my starter site, I have more than a dozen global styles all ready to go when I start a new install. This is dramatically sped up not only the time it takes me to develop a site, but the iterations I make along the way, and it really helps with the consistency of the entire build. If you're not taking advantage of the global styles inside of Generate Blocks, you're definitely missing out. If you'd like to see more crash courses like this, I have a couple other videos that I've made on some various Generate Blocks features. You can get to those by clicking either of the videos here, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.